Hi guys, Berry Babe here, checking in. It's a nighttime vlog. One of these days it's gonna to be too cold for me to come out here, but I just don't like vlogging in the house. Anyway, um, today I was down three pounds. I did have fat ankles last night. I took a water pill. So, so far my eating has been sane today. So, um, my husband, wanted me to pick him up a loaf of potato bread while I was out and around for somebody who's not eating carbs even though he eats potato bread because I don't particularly care for it. I still had to go look at all the bread. But I had a doctor's appointment today and um, it was my regular doctor. I couldn't get in. It was initially for my foot but then I started having um, dizzy spells. And I had quite a few really bad ones one night when I was in DC. And then I've had a couple while I was driving and that scared me. So um, for years I've had what they call branched bundle something or other. And last spring I asked her to, uh, my doctor, to send me for an ultrasound just to be sure. She said, well, if you're not having any symptoms, but I didn't want to take any chances and it came back normal. I guess normal for six for a 63 year old I don't know so I guess it would have been 62 then so he yelled at me for the not little yell he was a young good-looking guy um, he was concerned about me taking the water pills and he says you don't why do you take them now and then I said well I don't need them now and then when I'm doing well with my eating and not eating carbs I don't swell but since I had surgery on my legs my ankles tend to swell more so I only take them when I have swelling and he said well you don't take medication like that well you know you do <laughs> but I guess his patients don't <clears throat> and he's going to be moving probably about an hour away to his own office. I don't even know if he's if he would be in my I'm a I'm not an HMO. I have Blue Cross, but it's PPO, so he has to be registered with the PPO I belong to in order to be considered in my network. But I kind of liked that my doctor gave me some credit for knowing when I needed something and when I didn't. And it sounds like, so I said, well, what about the swelling? He said, well, it's poor circulation. Well, okay, duh. I was diabetic for years. I get numbness in my toes from time to time. My sugar's been fine for a long time since I had the DS surgery. But what am I supposed to do when my ankles swell like tree trunks? You know, and so I have this appointment with a cardiologist Friday morning. It makes me a little nervous how fast they got me in because I think they bump me to the head of the line, so to speak. But it occurs to me, what is a cardiologist going to do? He's going to tell you no salt, low fat, whole carbs. <laughs> My nightmare! Ah! And you know I have, and I'm not going to exaggerate, probably 25 pounds of bacon cooked in the freezer. All cooked ready to stick in the microwave, ready for keto. You know, this is eerily parallel. Back in 92, when I was diagnosed with diabetes and ended up on insulin, I had just ordered through my then brother-in-law a gallon of peppermint stick ice cream. And then I get the diagnosis of diabetes. So the fact that I have 20, 25 pounds cooked bacon in my freezer and that doesn't include the already cooked packages I got from Sam's <laughs> that I didn't get to eating because I went back on HCG so I am nervous about that not so much because I might have a problem but nervous because what's that going to mean for my surgery next summer I don't want to be stuck with tits different sizes I don't want that so one bit of good news today, you know, I had been running with my waist at 40 and my rib cage 40 and my hips at 40 and, and um, I measured today and my waist was 36. <sighs> okay, now I have extra skin around my waist, but you know, they say you need to have a waist of 35. 
or below. So, but you know, I, I was just listening to um, one of the women who was having um, um, a, one of the weight loss surgery people who was having chest pains and so she's going to go see the doctor and she's so afraid that she's going to walk in and she put on weight with her baby and hasn't been able to take it off and she's afraid they're going to see her as fat and that's all they're going to say all they're going to see is that she's fat and she's got heart problems and maybe not look further um, but he this doctor was quite amazed when I started cataloging the bariatric surgeries that I've had and and I'm down I probably am down 35 pounds from when I was in to see my doctor the last time so it's obvious that I've lost weight but as far as the up and down and up and down and up and down you know I don't think that's in the history but I think he perceived he said something about you're you're a healthy girl other than this electrical issue or something like that and I think he said girl and it's like oh is that patronizing I mean I'm glad he affirmed that other than this I'm fairly healthy and I'm at a healthy weight, so therefore he assumes I'm healthy. If I was sitting in there at 300 pounds, what would he have said? Same heart, I don't know. So it isn't, it is, this isn't a matter of, what did I say? It, this isn't a matter of mechanics. This is an electrical issue because your heart's like a motor. So I don't know. I just think, oh my God, pacemaker. I mean, you know, I don't know. So I got to get on the internet and read. I asked for a copy of the EKG and it's got the diagnosis right on there. And so I want to compare it to the one I had taken um, before my surgery early spring and see if the numbers have changed to see if there's been any, I don't know, you know. So yeah, that's, that's stressful. And you know, I have I have a um, well, she's an oncologist, but she's a hematologist for my iron infusions because um, I because of my bariatric surgery, I don't absorb iron. So I now okay, I'm collecting them, aren't I? I've got uh, a hematologist, and now I'm going to have a cardiologist. What's next? I probably end up with a nephrologist. Some they'll find something wrong with my kidneys, and a neurologist because I am crazy. So, anyway, I um, am hoping I'll be down some more on the scale tomorrow, but I'm looking at my ankles and they're swollen. They're not huge, but they're swollen. My wrists are going down, but it's like, swollen. What am I going to do? I don't dare take a Lasix. Mm, maybe break it in half. Mm, better wait till I see the cardiologist. So I have to make a list of all the medications and supplements I take. I take I, I take a lot of little ones I added in, like selenium and iodine and biotin and <coughs> things that as I was reading about thyroid and um, that sort of thing. He saw, the doctor had given me, <coughs> I'm sorry, my throat's a little, but I've been trying to use my CPAP. And it dries my mouth out so much. <clears throat> I think that's what's going on tonight. And I'm sitting outside and the dew is coming up. Um, well, I forgot what I was talking about, but I remembered what I forgot the other night. <laughs> so let me tell you that and maybe the other thing will come back to me. I wanted to tell you that on Monday when I went down to Rochester Hills, to my or Auburn Hills, to my bariatric support group meeting, I went to two different HCG boutiques and the only thing I bought was an angel food cake pan because Grandma DC is doing keto and she made a sugar-free angel food cake and it looked pretty good and I like angel food cake but I didn't have an angel food cake pan and I bought one but it was so mangled it's a two-piece that I was afraid all the batter would leak out 
So this one was only a dollar and it's in much better shape. So when I'm able to get back into regular low carb or keto, if that's what it ends up being, um, I will be able to make an angel food cake. So the last thing I need is to bring one more piece of kitchen equipment into this house. But um, I'm trying to think of what I forgot. It was something about... Oh, my thyroid. He saw that I had talked the doctor into, my doctor, into giving me a very small dosage of the armor thyroid, which is desiccated pig pancreas. And um, it's supposed to be a more natural way. It's what they used in the 50s. And then Synthroid came in with Big Pharma, and now everybody prescribes Synthroid, whether it works for you or not. And I've long suspect my mother had thyroid problems, and my sister has thyroid problems, and my mother always said you have thyroid problems, but it doesn't show up in the blood work. It doesn't show up in the average blood work. You've got to get into the free T this and free for free T for that, and and you have to go to an alternative medicine person in order to get service, and you have to pay that out of pocket. So. I just, I did a lot of reading. There's a, a group called um, Stop the Thyroid Madness, and they just really are advocating for patient, some patient input. And so um, he saw that, that armor thyroid, and he said, oh, don't take that. And I said, so he, he, as a young doctor, he's totally against it. So you, it's just like, and finding a doctor to help you do the keto, support you in the keto diet. It's so far against what they were taught to keep your insulin low is to make you more healthy. So anyway, I don't think I want him for a regular doctor. I want somebody that's more malleable and um, that may not, that may be, you know, the older you get, the more they tell you just to shut up and do what they tell you. My doctor always, because I'd come in with all the books and I'd say, okay, this is these are my symptoms and this is how I feel, what's going on. I mean, I actually, I was on insulin back in 92 and then it resolved, it resolved with the first surgery and it resolved with the second surgery, but then it started to build up again and I was having blood sugars up in the 370s and um, I had found out that for insurance companies, if they find out that you're on insulin, that wax you into like next to death bracket and so I ordered I, I bought books and I read all about it and they have a fast acting insulin now they didn't have that when I had taken it years ago and the trick with the insulin is the long acting insulin you have to kind of decide what you're going to eat and blah 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 and try not to have low insulin but now they have one that that you take right when you're going to eat so I ordered it from Canada and I was doing my own thing Fortunately, with the DS, the diabetes got resolved, but um, yeah, I'm not a real compliant patient, I'm afraid. So this is going to be real interesting. If I walk out of there with the, the, the food pyramid with all those carbs on the bottom, I'm going to have to go looking for a new doctor. So anyway, that's all for now. I have a busy day tomorrow. I've got, <clears throat> I got to get blood work. And I have to pick up, I did get him to give me a script for a new glucometer, but only one strip a day. Um, and I'm going to get an x-ray on my foot. He gave me that. And then we are meeting the mother of one of my husband's old best friends. Um, they used to pee out the barn, write their names in the snow when they were kids. All those kids have moved away, so we're going to take his 80-something mother to the book shop and to do some Christmas shopping. So we're doing that tomorrow. So I don't know. I should have a chance to vlog before it gets dark. And I'm hoping I have a loss to report. So I'm almost out of time. So I'll see you again sometime. Bye.